In this movie, I'll introduce you to the final color adjustment that we'll be seeing in this chapter. It's the most powerful one as well, and it goes by the name Hue Saturation. So notice I have a bunch of layers inside of this image, including the spray paint cans that come to us from the Fotolia Image Library, about which you can learn more and get deals at fotolia.com slash deek. If I want to affect all the layers, then I need to make sure the top one in the stack is selected. In my case, it happens to be a folder full of layers, which is known as a group inside Photoshop. And then I'll click on this black and white circle at the bottom of the layers panel and choose hue saturation. Or if you want to name the layer as you create it, go ahead and bring up the adjustments panel and then press the alt key or the option key on the Mac and click on this first icon in the second row. And that will bring up the new layer dialog box at which point I'll call the layer demo and click OK. Now I need the properties panel to be taller so that I can see all the options. And I don't want it to be in the way of everything that we're seeing on screen. So I'll just go ahead and drag the properties tab out to a free floating location like so. I'll hide the adjustments panel and then I'll go ahead and drag this guy by the horizontal bar at the top of the panel until it's more or less off screen. All right, now notice that we've got three sliders, hue, saturation, and lightness. If I change the hue value, Notice that I am figuratively rotating all the hues on screen so that at a hue value of plus 147, yellow becomes blue, green becomes violet, blue becomes orange, and so forth. Now, when I say figuratively rotating, I'm actually literally rotating the hues inside of the color wheel. So notice at a hue value of zero, that red is over here on the right-hand side. If I increase the value, it starts to move in a counterclockwise fashion, or if I reduce the hue value, you can see that it moves in a clockwise fashion. And of course, the colors of all the spray cans change as well. Now, I just want to make a point about adjustment layers. Let's say that you don't want to affect the text. You just want to affect the color wheel right there and the spray cans. In that case, you could just go ahead and drag the demo layer to below that text group. And now notice if I turn the demo layer off, it's affecting all the spray cans and the color wheel. But when I turn it back on, I'm not affecting the text layers. So bear in mind that an unclipped adjustment layer like this one affects all layers below it. All right, but I do want to affect all the layers in this image. So I'll go ahead and drag this demo layer back up, and I'm going to drop it outside of the text group. You don't want to drop it inside the group like so, or you'll end up losing it. In which case, you just need to click on that twirly triangle to twirl the group open and then grab that demo layer. It should be right there at the top of the stack and then drag it up until you see a horizontal line above that text group and then drop it into place. And then you can go ahead and twirl the text group close once again. Now I'm going to move this guy over the properties panel, that is to say, so I can better see what I'm doing. All right, now let's take a look at the saturation value. Notice if you crank the saturation value up, in my case, all the way to plus 100, which is the highest setting there is, then I'm going to increase the saturation of everything, including those desaturated colors in the middle of the color wheel right there. Notice that. And so this is the colors that they're most saturated. If you take the saturation value down to negative 100, then you'll turn everything in the image gray. All right, I'm going to go ahead and reset these values, which you could do by clicking on this little reset icon down here at the bottom of the panel. If that just resets one of the values, as it has done in my case, then go ahead and click that reset option again in order to restore a hue value of zero. Next, we have the lightness option, and this is one that you rarely use. And that's because it affects the brightness of every single luminance level inside the image. So notice if you increase the lightness value, you blow out the image. And if you decrease the value, you make the image extremely muddy. And of course, we don't want that, which is why 99% of the time you leave lightness set to zero, which I'll achieve just by clicking on that reset icon again. All right, now notice we've got this colorize checkbox. If you turn it on, then you're going to colorize the entire image with one hue value. So let's say I change the hue value to 120 is what I'm looking for, which is green. And then I crank the saturation value up to something like 50% then every single hue inside the image will be 120 degrees and every single saturation value will be 50%. So you're just replacing all the hues and all the saturation levels. And by the way, hue and saturation together add up to what's known as color inside Photoshop. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off Colorize, however, so that I can show you your final option, which is this tool right here. And it's known as the targeted adjustment tool. And notice as soon as I click on it, 
all of the tools in the vertical toolbox on the left side of the screen become deselected. And that's because this guy is actually an official tool inside Photoshop and you use it by dragging. And so let's say I decide to drag inside this green can. As soon as I click and hold, notice that I get this cursor that looks like a pointing finger and I have arrows going to the right or to the left. If you drag to the right, then you're going to increase the saturation, not of everything inside the image, but just that one range of colors. And notice Photoshop immediately switches the second option right there from master, which is how you affect all the colors in an image, to just the greens. And notice that I'm changing the saturation of the greens and nothing more. If I click and then drag to the left, then I'm going to decrease the saturation, in this case, just of the green can and the other greens in the image, including the word green and this green section of the color wheel. All right, I'll go ahead and reset that by clicking on the reset icon once again, down here at the bottom of the panel. And the other way to work is to press the control key or the command key on the Mac. If you do that and drag, so go ahead and keep that key down, then notice you're changing the hue of that can. And in my case, I've changed the hue value to plus 150. Again, I'm just affecting the greens, which means the green of the can, the green section of the color wheel, and the word green as well. And then if I wanted to add more saturation to the color, I would just go ahead and drag to the right as opposed to pressing the control key and dragging. If you press the control key or the command key on the Mac, and drag to the left, you're gonna rotate the hue values in a negative direction, which means that it can ultimately make the greens red. Not only here inside the can, but also the word green, as well as the green section of the color wheel. So again, you drag with the targeted adjustment tool to change the saturation of a group of colors. You press the control key or the command key on the Mac and drag to change the hues. And so that's how you work with the hue saturation adjustment layer. In the next movie, we'll see a practical application.